How are calories measured? Well, if you go into your kitchen, you'll probably find various food products with food labels on them, telling you the grams of fat, carbohydrates, proteins, and more. But if you happen to watch your waistline, then you're probably most curious about that one number on top, the total calorie count. But have you ever wondered how we measure the amount of calories? For example, those in this packet of string cheese? In the olden days, a caloric value was measured for what it is, the amount of energy stored in the chemical bonds of that food, which was measured through bomb calorimetry. This involved placing the said food in an oxygenated chamber surrounded by water and insulating layers. The food was then set aflame and fully burned. The resulting change in temperature of the water was then measured and multiplied by the kilograms of water, and voila, we obtained the caloric content of the food. But this gives us how much energy is in the food as a whole, and not how much we're actually receiving. In reality, a large amount of the energy obtained from our meals gets either lost through undigested fibers or released during a trip to the bathroom, and hence our problem. And it wasn't until the late 19th and early 20th centuries that this was corrected for by Dr. Wilbur Olin Atwater with the system he humbly named the Atwater System. In short, Dr. Atwater took a group of people and monitored the caloric content of their diets through repeated burning. He then measured the caloric content of their 1s and 2s and calculated the percent of the diet caloric content actually obtained by the subjects. That percent was then multiplied by the amount of energy in their meals. In the end, we get the amount of energy that we humans will, on average, obtain from fats, carbohydrates, or proteins in various foods. And through this, Dr. Atwater found that on average, proteins and carbohydrates produce 4 calories per gram, fats produce 9 calories per gram, while alcohols produce 7 calories per gram. Thus, a chocolate bar containing 2 grams of carbohydrates, 4 grams of fat, and 1 gram of protein would give us 48 calories, or what we Americans would call calories, but more on that later. The only problem is, this doesn't work so well in practice. As you can see from the original results, these values aren't exactly accurate, and are in fact rarely what they actually are. And this is because different foods are, well, different, and the Atwater system treats them all as the same. For instance, although a serving of almonds has 170 calories under the Atwater system, studies have shown that the servings actually give us around 130 calories, suggesting that the almond has fat locked away in structures that are different from the ones tested structures that we cannot digest. In addition, this system doesn't take into account the fact that our bodies lose calories as heat, so much so that around 20-30% to of a protein's calories and about 0-3% of a fat's calories are lost. The hour system also doesn't account for food processing, which releases calories that would have been previously ignored or not taken up, making the actual caloric content of something like mashed potatoes greater than that of a non-processed potato. But this doesn't mean that you should be worried if you happen to rely on the Atwater system to count calories. If your waist is your main priority, these deviations are minute and probably won't overtly affect weight loss. Plus, we're constantly on the lookout for a better, more accurate ways to measure calories. But until that's found, I'll keep eating my 80 calorie cheese sticks. Yum. If you travel between the UK and the US, you'll notice some differences. For one, the food labels use different units, or at least they seem to. The US rely on calories, while the UK rely on kilocalories, but they're actually the same thing. The units used in this video, found on food labels, actually represent kilocalories, and hence are 1000 times larger than the calories that are used in physics and chemistry. 